Hey guys, Brooke from BNR Farm Homestead, Cosh Rose Pothcary. Hadn't done one of these videos in a good minute. Um, I truly don't just post to post. I post when I feel or sense something. And um, huh. I got my Sophia with me. Wisdom, hoping that I only speak truth and uh, speak some wisdom and uh, that's simply only speak truth. I'm getting ready to piss a lot of y'all off. I know it. I feel it. No doubt in my mind. I'm getting ready to piss a lot of y'all off. Um... God, I hate this. If you know me, if you know me, then you know this is not what I want to do. If my phone cuts off, um, I did not um, block like phone calls and stuff like that. So if that happens, there'll be a part two. If you want to watch it, um, charge. I think it's pretty good. Oh, Sophia's pottying. Um, but anyway, I'm probably getting ready to piss a lot of people off. Um, and that's okay because um, I just feel like I have to say what I have to say. And it's just what it is, what it is. I say it with all love, grace, mercy, compassion. As I always tell you guys, I don't say that sarcastically. Even though my tone always comes across sarcastically. Hey, baby. But... I say this, so life is happening, right? Life is happening across the United States of America, across the nations, across the worlds. Uh, I know I have to be very careful with certain words. Um, can I just show you guys this real quick? Here's the black cohosh. Look at that. Black cohosh, guys. Black cohosh. Beautiful. We are have the abundance of black cohosh. Sophia! Black cohosh is phenomenal for women's hormones, anti inflammatory. You have to be careful how much you take it because it can be too much for your system. Research, we're not doctors. Black cohosh, guys. Premenopausal. Menopause. Anyway, I digress. Point is this. I so do not want to do this video. It's mind my business. We're trying to get our last harvest in or planting in, um, you know, because most things have 90 to 120 days uh, to full harvest and production of your food. And for where we're at, we're pushing it to be this, this beer last week. Um, I guess I'm like talking about all kinds of stuff because I really don't want to talk about this, but this one will say. We know where the world is at. We know the reality of where the world's at. Um, we know that there is famine coming. We know there's a depression coming. We know that trains are shutting down, going on strike. We know that truckers are doing their thing, going on strike, can't afford thing, can't afford the diesel. We know the reality that the food that you're getting at the grocery store today was actually from like a year or two years ago. We understand the reality we're in. I hope you understand the reality you're in. If you don't understand the reality in, then sadly, this video probably applies to you. And I'm really sorry for this video. I'm not God, I'm not sovereign. Uh, I'm not a prophet. I'm not anything. I just have common sense, which I hope we all did do have is common sense. So Randy and I have been talking a lot about a lot of things and about, you know, family, friends, foes, life in general, people, community, tribes, the way the world is, gardening, planting, processing chickens, getting wood stoves, doing your due diligence as, uh, we're supposed to do right um which that word doing your due diligence is from um Appalachia homestead with pa pat petra tara i can't sorry no disrespect i, I struggle with saying that word uh, she's freaking phenomenal um i'm so grateful that she has a channel that has such a huge 
following as she just cuts to the chase, breaks it down. It is so freaking awesome. I just want to high five her and be her best friend because she is my soul tribe. She is amazing. If you have not followed her, you really need to go find her. Um, she just says how it's real, but she has this amazing sense of humor, which I don't have because I'm totally um, not like that. And uh, God gives platforms to who he needs to give platforms to. So I applaud her and uh, I watch all her videos. And if you haven't, I highly suggest you watch her videos because she's awesome. Um, but anyway, I digress. Although I have to say she's been doing this like six, nine, ten years or something like that. Like she's awesome. But um, anyway, my point is this. Randy and I were talking today and we were talking about certain situations with people we know. Um, in their gardens and the way they are, blah, 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 blah. We all have those people in our life that are half-heartedly doing things or expecting other people to do it for them um, or unwilling to do it or whatever. You know, the long list of realities of humanity, right? It's just always been since the day of Noah. That's my whole point to this. So... This is where I say, I'm going to piss a lot of people off. But, if you know me, um, I'm going to say how I feel. And I don't necessarily care. I care about your soul. I care about the healing of your soul and your mind and your heart. But if you need a big smack in the freaking face, and you need reality at your throat, then uh, this is for you. If you're not ready for that, click off right at this precise moment in time and uh, never watch my videos again because I am not for you and you are not for me and that's just the reality right right okay so let's if 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 you are a see let me break this down and say this I can only speak to Christians and I say that because I only have that knowledge and understanding of Christianity. I was born raised Catholic. It was a terrible experience. My mom ripped us out because all they talked about was money. But I digress on that. Um, then I searched and searched and searched because I was trying to find Jesus. All right, I was trying to find Jesus. I was trying to find Jesus wherever I could find Jesus because that's all I knew was Jesus, right? <sighs> mm, mm, mm. Ooh, I have so much to say as for another topic, but I'm going to say this. If you follow the Bible, okay? And you follow the New Testament. Because I guarantee you, most of you Christians out there who follow the New Testament. No, back up, bro. Those who follow the Bible, you follow the New Testament. You don't follow towards Snook. Now, by no means am I proclaiming that I follow the Tor and the Tanook like Jews do. By no means am I an any way, shape, or form saying that I do everything according to Scripture. Not even remotely. And I also, and by no means, am I living in, living in a fantasy of grace and mercy, thinking that that's what's going to save me either. Not doing that either. Because, see, I think, personally... It's your responsibility to do what's right. So if you're following the Christian Bible, following the Tanuk, God knows I ain't speaking against the Tanuk nor any Jewish person because I do not know it the way they know it. However, I do know Christians. If the Torah Tanuk, the New Old Testament, is the foundation of the New Testament, then you have to have everything it has to be founded upon that, right? You can't create something new and invent something new in order to create your own doctrine and your own belief and your own system and all that you want in order to justify who you are and how you want to live. It doesn't happen that way. That's not God. So in Genesis, as I've said a thousand times, says, sin is at your door, crouching at your door, 
knocking, you know what to do is right. Do it. Right? Do it. Do what's right. Do what's right. If you know right from wrong and evil, do what's right. Stop using Jesus, quote, quote, as your tap out button thinking that only grace and mercy is going to save you. Because you believe. Because we've gone through plenty of videos about that and how you use Jesus. You use his blood. You make excuses for yourself. You justify your sin. You justify all that you do in order to continue to live the way you choose to live, right? That's what you do. That's what most Christians do. You wonder why the world don't want nothing to do with your God? Guess what? Accountability? day of judgment it's going to fall on you because you're supposed to be the light which technically is actually the jews that are supposed to be the light and spread the gospel but that's for a whole nother story because i'm not a theologian in the torah or the tanakh nor the new testament however i will say this i challenge each and every one of you this moment this day <laughs> this is what i say Although everything I've probably said leading up to this moment is probably pissing a lot of people off. But I just don't care because I'm so tired of the just the excuses and the justification. And the We are in a state of this world that a lot of y'all get ready to die. You're getting ready to die. you literally getting ready to starve. You're getting ready to dehydrate. I've said this in other videos. You're getting ready to lose everything you have. You're counting on one thing and you're probably gonna lose everything you have. And I'm not saying this to discourage you. I'm saying this to encourage you. I'm saying this to bring some freaking reality into your head. If you're not gardening, if you are not making plans, if you're not canning, dehydrating, preserving, preparing, doing the things that you know you should do and you say, God's got me. I'm saved. Ooh, the blood covers me. I'm good. And I know a lot of you might say, oh, she's sarcastic. She's blasting me. She's blasting me, the Holy Spirit. No, no, mm -mm, no, no. Not that I need to defend Hashem, the true God of Israel. Not that I need to defend him by no means. But if the New Testament is supposed to be Support it by the Tanukh and the Torah. Then we can look at Joseph and we can look at Noah. The door shut. Uh, Pharaoh gained multiple lands because of the inability for the people to do what they needed to do to prep, survive, and thrive. Let's get real. Let's get real. Did the door shut on humanity? If that's the God you believe in, if that's the word that you believe, if that is the truth you believe, did the door not get shut? And for those who say two by two, reread your word. I want two by two. It's amazing to me how twisted scriptures get, just like the whole thing with Jesus in the manger, and they called him Emmanuel, and the whole thing with the virgin and Isaiah, which guess what, guys? It was a young lady, and it was for that particular king at that moment that prophecy got fulfilled for that king. It was not a foretelling of the Mashiach that was coming. You can debate me all day, all you want within the scriptures. But if you read the whole scripture, if you read the whole chapter, it's talking about the king at that moment. At that time and season, and he said, literally, the prophet said, you see that young maiden over there? She will conceive a child. They will name him Manuel, and you know what God was with you, and you will win this war. That was for that moment in time. That wasn't anything to come past. Years, thousands of years down the road, that was for that moment in time, but I digress on that. God, I'm wound up this morning i am lord god have mercy on me because i am wound up this morning because you know what i'm so tired of uh dealing with people who are believers that literally think that god is just going to bail them out and they don't really half-heartedly do things you know the grace and mercy is going to cover them they don't really have to do a whole lot you know you do the bare minimums to say oh god you know my heart you know my heart you just simply know my heart and you know i'm trying 
If you're trying, you'd be working sun up to sundown. If you were trying, there would be more efforts. If you're trying, there'd be more fruit in your basket, right? Right? Okay. Mm. Oh, Lord, I'm going to get a thousand dislikes. No, I'm not. You know why? Because don't nobody watch these videos. But a handful of people. And those handful of people that watch my videos, thank you. I pray the blessings... Oh, Shem, I pray the blessings of the creator of this universe engulf you, encamp around you, love you, heal your mind, your soul, and your hearts. Make provisions left, right, north, south, west, east that you never anticipated. I pray that this day that you watch this video, that there is a specific prayer that you've seeked. Your creator for come to pass. I pray that the abundance of overflow and your minimal lack of ability, not in a negative way, but in a reality of way, because we all have lack of ability. I pray that that is multiplied a hundredfold. I pray, it's a, I, I pray that the creator of this universe touches your mind, your heart, your soul, your physical body, heals you in areas that you are concerned for, that you're not going to have medication. I pray the healing virtue literally come forth into your body, your mind, your heart, and your soul. I pray your mind changes. I pray your heart changes. I pray your soul changes. I pray your life changes. I pray that people will come into your life that are like-minded. And that God would supernaturally remove everybody out of your life that is not like-minded. Doesn't make anybody right or wrong. It just means I pray you find your tribe. I pray you find your tribe. Your tribe is what's going to sustain you through what's coming. So, say this. There's a lot of people <laughs> I've met along my journey. I'll just say the last five years, right? That want to be a part of what we're doing. You want to know why? You think it's because of my kind, sweet demeanor that everybody loves? Absolutely not. I know I'm coming across really harsh today because I'm really mad today. I'm so mad today. It's everything I can to not spit fire out of my mouth. I'm so mad today. And then when God asked me to do a video, I thought, are you kidding me? Today is not the day for you to want me to speak to anybody, not even one single person. But you know what? There's one single person out there that's going to say, amen. Girl, I feel you. And as I always say, one pebble, one person, changes the multitudes. One person. I don't care if it's one person. You know how people want to connect with us because of what we supposedly have or what we can offer them? Do you know, you know how many, you know what one of the things that God has dealt with me here recently? I don't know if you remember a video I did back if you watched any of my videos. I did a video a while back about releasing the burden of people. Because one of the things that God showed me was that my whole life, I've been in so many one-way relationships. And if you yourself understand one-way relationships, then you, I, there's no need to explain what a one-way relationship is. I can go back to when I was in middle school. I could probably go back to elementary school, but I'd really have to really think on that. But I know I can go back to middle school on what one-way relationships are. And sadly, it's the need for acceptance. It's the need to feel wanted, to feel loved, to feel appreciative, to feel accepted, to feel needed, to feel loved. How many times I got to say these things? To feel loved, to feel needed, to feel accepted. Those are those one-way relationships. And if you're aware of those one-way relationships, I encourage you at this moment, break free. One-way relationships is going to get you just that one way. Because then everybody begins to use you and think that they can just get away with it. And they can just get what they want. They can get information from you. They can get whatever they need from you. Because they know they take your grace for granted. They take your kindness for weakness. Now, I know some of y'all are probably thinking... Ain't no way in hell this girl I'm listening to right now has any kindness for weakness. I promise you, I am. You just see some of these videos where I just like,
right? That's what you see. So I guess my thing is this. I challenge you. I challenge you. I challenge everybody who watches this video. Whatever faith, whatever belief you are in, just come back to me in a year from now. You sat on your ass. You thought God was just going to do whatever he's going to enable on you. He's just going to give you the fishes and loaves. Yes, I know we've talked about you getting ready to read what you sow and some people are getting ready to do that. Because some people out there have been truly kind within their soul. No alternative motives. Absolutely no narcissism. No control, no manipulation. No nothing. They genuinely have a desire to be kind and help people. Where there's so many people that literally calculate who they can be kind to, who they can get away with things with, how can they control somebody to benefit what they need and what they want. That's why it's really best not to rely on anybody but yourself and God. Because in the end, who are you really going to rely on? You and God? Or you and man? Which one is it? I personally rather rely on me and God than man. I've known people who will kiss my ass and be all about whatever I'm doing at that moment because at that moment it benefits them. But then somebody else that they'd rather be friends with or rather hang out with or is family or closer to them, they'll, they'll drop you. They'll literally drop you. And they'll go to that next person because that person benefits them and they can control them and benefit them better than you. Where do you think that's going to happen? What, what, what do you think is going to happen to that person in the end? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I ain't perfect. Not to say in any way, shape, or form. I've not functioned in things that are unholy and unrighteous over the years. Not to say I haven't stabbed people on the back and hurt people. By all means, am I even remotely proclaiming any kind of perfection? I'd be the first to say, I've been a bitch. I'll be the first to say, I've tried to survive. I'll be the first to say these things. quite sure where this video is going I don't even know if I'm gonna post it because my whole initial part of this video was to challenge you show me who your God is throw water throw some water down throw the water down on your offering show me who your God is because a lot of y'all think you ain't got to do nothing. Throw your water down. <laughs> ooh. Ooh. That is a rough one, isn't it? Mm, that's a rough one for me because I have to do the same thing, right? I have to throw my water down. I have to give my offering to the God I serve. Mm. The funny thing is, is that if I was a man and I was saying these things, I'd be getting so many amens, hallelujah. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. The things that I'd be saying, and I've said my videos, because I've watched other videos of guys saying similar things. But let a woman say it. Now, I ain't burning no brawls at all. At all am I burning any brawls. But let's look at Proverbs 31. Read that a few times until you get the revelation and the understanding. Throw your water on your offering. And in the next few years, See what happens. Change your mind. Change your heart. Prepare. Because the ark, I think, personally, has shut. If we go back to the foundational teachings, right? I think the ark is shut. 
I think the seven years is just about done to prepare for seven years of famine. And, uh, I think a lot of y'all screwed. I'm just being honest. I mean, I want to try to be, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying, a lot of y'all screwed. A lot of y'all's faith are getting ready to get tested. A lot of y'all getting ready to see some stuff. A lot of y'all getting ready to deal with some stuff. I mean, winter's coming around the corner. If you're in a cold climate, or not even a cold climate, then you don't have a wood stove. Shame on you. Mainly those who are in colder climates, because those that are not in colder climates would not even think to get a wood stove, right? Unless you pay attention to the voice of your creator, you pay attention to Texas the other year. Then maybe you'd use some wisdom and you'd get yourself a wood stove. And you'd get some wood and you'd prepare for the possibilities of possible freezing or not freezing. I sure would not want to freeze to death. So, if you haven't gotten a wood stove and you can't find a wood stove, because I live in the mountains, and guess what, guys? Real wood stoves that aren't pellet wood stoves are pretty hard to find. And guess what else is really hard to find? Is something called the flue, the pipes that connect it to go outside. Do you know how hard they are to come by? And I live in the mountains where it is, most people have them. <laughs> I want to say I'm so sorry for sounding so horrible, but I'm not going to apologize. I, I, I refuse to apologize because if you take offense to this, you're never going to survive what's coming. You're so weak in your mind and your heart and your spirit, and you're so delicate and your skin is so thin. You're never going to survive. You'll never survive what's coming. Ever going to survive what's coming. Because the reality is, there's going to be rioting, looting, raping, pillaging, stealing. I mean, what else is getting ready to hit? Your country and my country, if your country has not already been hit, it's going to hit my country and I live in the United States of America. Because I promise you... We are becoming weak as a nation. We will collapse every business, company, corporation eventually crumbles. The United States of America is a company. A company. There's been a desecration on the White House law, lawn, excuse me. There's been a desecration on the White House lawn. The Capitol will implode. States will secede. New nations will be formed. A new flag will be raised. And there will be lawlessness. We're getting ready to get hit, guys. We are getting ready to get hit. Like, like... <laughs> I don't know if I did it in some videos before. I don't know if I did. Um, I have it documented in my my emails, you know, times and dates. But over a year ago, I saw uh, trains getting ready to get hit. And the transportation within the United States getting ready to come to an end to transport goods. And uh, I saw steamships, sadly. I didn't know what that meant. Then I started researching steamships, and steamships was the ability to transport goods of the Mississippi, right? You know, that's how goods were transported. Well, in my mind, I thought, well, you know, a daggone uh, earthquake is getting ready to hit in the Mississippi. That, that, that fault line is getting ready to get taken out. And then I started researching more and more, and God began to talk to me about these trains. And I have a few handful of people that remember me talking about that. I have a handful of people remember me talking about all things that are coming to pass, whether they want to remember, believe, accept, 
It's easier for us to put our heads in the sand, isn't it? It's easier for us to ignore reality. It's easier for... Look, guys, I'm the first to tell you the anger I had towards God is through the freaking roof. And I have been dealing... And maybe some of my anger is coming out through this video because I have such anger to God right now. I've been so mad at Him the last couple weeks. There's so many things I want to achieve and accomplish, new business I want to open. There's so many things I want to do. Randy and I talk about selling everything, getting an RV and travel around the world. Guess what? I can't do any of these things. I can't travel the United States in an RV. I can't open up a new business. I'd be a fool to do that. Everything that we have, every time and energy we have should be preparing for what's coming. Do you know how mad I am about that? And I'm sure a lot of you guys are pissed that your life is being altered. That's why most of you put your head in the sand and ignore it. But I'm telling you, you're the ones who are going to die. You're the ones who are going to starve. You're the ones that the door is going to be shut on your neighbor friends. Because do you for a second think that those that are working their freaking asses off and laboring sun up to sundown and sacrificing and not going on vacations, not being able to have the things they want and desire. You think for a second they're going to choose you over themselves? Wake up. Come to reality and wake up. Y'all are fools. God, I get so angry. And in part of my anger, which I know is a lot of this community out there, preppers and homesteaders, they're getting pissed. You know why they're getting pissed? Because they've been working their ass off for so long and so many years and sacrificing so much. And y'all think you're going to either slide in and steal it, take it, manipulate your way in, or sit on your freaking ass and do nothing and go on vacation and buy this and buy that and get your nails done and have all these finer things and go out to eat and do all these grand things that we all would love to do. But are we doing it? No. You know why? Because we want to thrive and survive with the war that is at hand that is coming to America, that's coming to these nations, that's coming to the world that we're already in. You think for a second anyone that has any common sense has been working their ass off is going to say, oh yes, please come take what I've sacrificed and worked. Oh, well, that's not love and that's not grace. And that's not mercy. Wake up. The ark shut. The solos for Joseph and Pharaoh closed. And everybody lost or died lost their land, lost everything, or died in the flood. You think you're any different if you're unwilling to do what you're supposed to do regardless of what religion, spiritual path you believe? You think you're any different? Wake up. Wake up. Get your ass off the freaking couch and go work. Go plant a garden. Go get some freaking chickens. Can some food. Dehydrate some food. Buy some extra stuff. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Whoo, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Lord, I'm going to get a thousand dislikes on this if this thing ever goes past five views. I don't care. That's the thing. I don't care because it's reality. And I'm just speaking what the multitude of people that are doing what I'm doing is thinking. I'm just speaking it. With no sugar coat, no sarcasm, no lightheartedness, no laugh, no nothing. Just, just as the reality. I don't care about views. I don't care about subscriptions. I don't care about none of those things. Because obviously you can see I ain't got no hardly no subscribers. I'm just speaking my mind out into the universe. Because you know what? It vibrates out. Don't we have power of life and death in our tongue? Didn't God speak and it was so, Right? Greater things we will do. Isn't that what the scriptures say? If that's the faith in God you believe. Such sarcasm coming out of my mouth. But you know what? I'm so tired. I am so tired. I'm so tired. Of the excuses. From so many people that I know. It's so many people that I know that know. As to why they can't do the simple things. I am so tired, and I have no care, no concern, no worry about you, and God knows that sounds awful. I'm going to focus on those that are trying, that are really trying. I'm not talking half 
ass trying. I'm talking about they ain't going on vacation. They ain't getting their nails done. They ain't getting their hair. Do you know how long it's been since I've had my hair cut? Granted, I hate going to the hair salon. I absolutely hate it. My mama makes me go when she comes to visit me. She literally will take me and make me go get my hair done. But I hate doing it. Used to. God, I used to love having my hair dyed blonde. I'd have my hair done, my nails done. I'd go tanning. I had makeup. I wore the cute clothes, had the right purse, all those things. Just like a lot of you. Till God had to break me of it. And now, and thank God he broke me of it because where I'm at today, because if I had to break free of all those materialistic nonsense, I'd be in a big heap of trouble. Well, anyway, I guess I'm going to end here because I guess if I post this, this has been a huge bashing, which has really been a bashing of love and trying to get people to wake up. Because let me tell you something. If this was my 18-year-old child, I'm 17. Poor baby's 18 now. God bless his soul. If this was my 18-year-old son, I'd be saying the same thing to him. I'd be just as hard going off smacking him upside the head as I am this video. You know why? Not because I'm a bitch. It's because I give a shit. Oh my God, you said the cuss word. Oh dear Lord, you must not be holy. You must not be righteous. How dare you say a cuss word? You know what? I'm going to be a bitch to my kid because I want him to survive the world that's coming. I'm going to kick him in the ass. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get him to wake up so he doesn't die. So he knows how to function. He knows how to survive. I'm not going to coddle him and caress him. And I'm not going to enable him to die with the way the world's coming. 10 to 12 years depression America's never seen. Now let's think about the depression that America saw in the late 20s into the 30s. Guess what? How, what was the population back then? How many people were on pharmaceutical drugs for their minds? What was the way of the world? Did they can? Did they garden? Did they self-sustain? Were they homesteaders? What were they? Those in the city weren't making it, but those out living in the country was the way of life. What do you think's going to happen to you? You got millions and millions and millions of people in the suburbs and the cities. Where do you think they're going to go? Where are they going to flock to? What do you think is going to happen when they're hungry? Y'all are fools. You're straight up fools if you think life is just going to be handed to you and you think God's just going to simply give you fishes and loaves. <laughs> this, is my, this is my advice to you in the church. Oh, sarcasm here. 101. All them tithes. <laughs> All them tithes and offerings. All that time that you've volunteered, I hope your church has got food, medicine, diapers, formula, medical supplies, tents, sleeping bags, extra wood for your wood stoves. If you don't have them, I hope they have some propane for you. Let's see, what else do you need? Um, bandages, tampons, pads, your extra eyeglasses because... You might need a new prescription or you might lose them or break them. Let's see, what else? Um, gosh, let's see, soap, laundry detergent, a way to do laundry, a way to wash your body when the grid goes down. Let's see, hot water, dish soap, uh, let's see, lights. What else can we say? If you have animals, dog food, cat food, hamster food, what else is there? Your entire way of living. I hope your church has it. I hope your church has been wise enough in listening to the Spirit of God Most High, the creator of this universe, saying, prepare for the masses. Prepare for the masses. Because it's getting ready to get real. And a lot of people are getting ready to die. I hope the money that you're, you've been paying into your church is ready for the multitude in the mass chaos that's getting ready to come to your church? You think all these people in your church has been paying tithes and offering, volunteering their time, and they're hungry, and they need to take a bath? You, who do you think they're coming to first? 
You think, where, who do you think they're coming to? They're coming to their church, to their pastor, to those that is their shepherd who's supposed to be watching over them. That's who they're coming to. Then they come to people like me and you that are preparing. And guess what happens then? The door gets shut twice because the ark is closed. The grains are filled because the famine is here. Wake up. Sorry to tell you, a lot of y'all are screwed. Not being a bitch, just coming into reality. Shalom.